Hey Hunters, Lord here, back with another Sunbreak set video for Title Update 4. Today's video is going to cover an insane raw damage sword and shield build that you can make with some of the new decorations added in the most recent Title Update. Of course, as usual, this set will require no Curious Augments, and the charm will only need a level 3, a level 2, and a 1 slot with no extra skills. This should help mitigate the effect that RNG has on your ability to make this base set, and of course, as you know, I will always go over what skills you can look to add with your augments at the end, so be sure to stick around for that. With that out of the way guys, let's go ahead and get straight into the set. Now starting off with the weapon, I personally, like I said, prefer going for raw, so I only have one build to worry about for most hunts. Elemental Sword and Shield is a whole different setup, so I'll leave that to the Sword and Shield experts like my boy Barusu. My weapon of choice is the Scorn Magnum Isle Sword and Shield, as it has really good raw, purple sharpness, blast, and really nice slots. Some other choices that you could go for that I would recommend are Rathian, Gold Rathian, or even Flaming Espinus. Of course though, the choice is always up to you. Now with that being said, I will be showcasing the set using the Scorn Magnum Isle Sword and Shield, so be aware that your slots may differ if you choose something different. Now be sure to augment your Sword and Shield for attack 8 and get that 9th anomaly slot as this helps us achieve the highest damage rating and still nets us a bonus plus 10 purple sharpness. You're going to slot in your anti-species deco of choice, then a guardian and critical jewel. Starting off with the head, we're using Risen Kushala fitted with another guardian and critical jewels and then a level 1 deco of your choice. The chest is just the regular Valstrax chest where you're going to fit in a dragon spirit and intrepid jewel. The arms are also from regular Crimson Glow, where you'll fit in a second Dragon Spirit Jewel. The waist is from Risen Tiastra, you're going to slot in the final Dragon Spirit and Guardian Jewels. The legs are the Nephilim Greaves, and you're going to fit them with a single Mastery Jewel. Now like I said before, the Talisman is just useless skills, but has a 3, a 2, and a 1 slot, where you're going to fit in a Tenderizer, the last critical, and a Braze Jewel here. You actually don't even need 3-2-1, you could go 2-2-1. So now that we've got the build all set, let's take a look at our skills and how they'll work best with this set. The most impactful one obviously is Dragonheart. Prior to title update 4, we needed 5 pieces of Crimson Glow Valstrax armor to get this, but now with the decoration available, we're able to get level 5 and still fit in a ton of other skills. Now of course at level 5, when we are at 80% or lower HP, we get all of our elemental resistances set to 50 and a bonus 10% attack power which is absolutely crazy for both survivability and damage. After that, we of course have your typical skills like Crit Boost 3, which makes all your critical hits deal 40% more damage than regular hits, Weakness Exploit 3 for 50% crit chance on cutting hit zones of 45 or higher, then Master's Touch, which gives us an 80% chance to not consume sharpness on critical hits. We then use Offensive Guard for plus 15% damage on well-timed Metsu Silk Binds, as this is a great skill to use for roars and other quicker attacks to help punish the monster, and getting a plus 15% damage on that is really key. We also have Wirebug Whisper level 3 that works in tandem with Wind Mantle level 1 to help recharge our Wirebug super quickly, allowing you to get off more Silk Bind skills throughout the course of a hunt. We then have Coalescence 3, to merge with Bloodlust, which gives us attack boost after clearing the Frenzy. And clearing Bloodlust also gives us plus 20% affinity as well, which synergizes well with Weakness Exploit and our Master's Touch. We then also get Resuscitate level 2 for free, which will actually give us plus 10 attack while we are inflicted with the Frenzy. It kind of works opposite to Coalescence. Coalescence activates when you clear a Blight, and Resuscitate works while you are Blighted. We then have Intrepid Heart to help you hyper armor through attacks or roars once you've built it up. Now, we also get one level of Berserk from the Nephilim Legs, which will turn all your green HP bar into red HP on the blue scroll. You have two real options when it comes to this skill. Option one is to just leave it, then you can use the blue scroll to proc Dragon Heart, since when you come back to red scroll, only half of the red HP bar will return to green. Or option two, you can use it as fodder for your curious augments to get rid of Berserk for something that you find more beneficial. Again, this is just going to come down to whichever you would prefer, so the choice is yours. We then round off the set with a level to flinch free, obviously, and powder mantle, which are both incredibly useful skills. Okay, so now you have the basic set, the base skills, what can you add with augments and a better charm? Well, as I always say, I recommend going for good slots in your armor over anything else, as those are much easier to roll and not as RNG heavy, and it allows you to interchange skills by using different decorations on a per hunt basis. However, some skills that you can keep an eye out for adding to your set are 
Attack boost levels 4 to 7, extra levels to Wind or Powder Mantle, getting extra Bloodlust to boost you to 25% crit after clearing the Frenzy. A second level of Intrepid Heart would be good, any amount of Burst, some extra Handicraft, or any other quality of life skills that you prefer. Now one last thing that I would recommend, and this is just a side tip, if you're worried about sharpness, you could drop Destroyer Oil Silkbind into your blue scroll. It was recently buffed that when you use Destroyer Oil, you gain some sharpness back and is way faster than sharpening, allowing you to stay in the fight and get sharpness back at the same time. Shout out to my boy Jono for putting me onto this skill. I've really been enjoying using it lately, especially in these really high health level 200 afflicted monsters. So guys, that's going to do it for this one. If you did find the set helpful, be sure to hit that like button down below as it's a totally free way to support my channel. If you're new here, new to Monster Hunter, or if you find yourself coming back to my videos on the regular, why don't you consider hitting that subscribe button for more Monster Hunter content just like this. You can always change your mind in the future if you decide that the content just isn't for you. Now with all that being said guys, thank you so much for watching. I wish you all a good day and happy hunting.